In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Opening antiphon, the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning, Holy Mass is offered for Carmelita Tan as a, an offering of thanksgiving. The church honors today a very happy saint, Saint Philip Neri. This saint is very dear to Father Donald. Father Donald considers this a feast day for him because uh, he was uh, moved by the example of Saint Philip Neri. Um, uh, Father Donald was when he was a, Jew, a freshman in high school, and he, he met that saint um, in hearing you know, about the saints in, in religion class, and uh, so. I uh, want to remember Father Donald as well. As we enter now into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who never cease to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you have raised up for yourself, graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us that fire with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Come to our aid, O God of the universe. Look upon us. Show us the light of your mercies and put all the nations in dread of you. Thus they will know as we know that there is no God but you, O Lord. Give new signs and work new wonders. Gather all the tribes of Jacob, that they may inherit the land as of old. Show mercy to the people called by your name. Israel, whom you named your firstborn, take pity on your holy city, Jerusalem, your dwelling place. Fill Zion with your majesty, your temple with your glory. Give evidence of your deeds of old. Fulfill the prophecies spoken in your name. Reward those who have hoped in you, and let your prophets be he proved true. Hear the prayer of your servants, for you are ever gracious to your people, and lead us in the way of justice. Thus, it will be known to the very ends of the earth that you are the eternal God. The word of the Lord. Show us, O Lord, the light of your kindness. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past, May your compassion quickly come to us. 
for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the ship of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples were on the way, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. Taking the twelve aside, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit on him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days, he will rise. Then John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want, to do, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit, one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will will be baptized, but to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as Rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> the Saint Philip Neri. Saint Philip Neri was born in the middle of the period of history we call the Renaissance, the rapid modernization of uh, of countries and governments and uh, businesses uh, uh, and banks, you know, began to flourish. So there was more money in the Renaissance than there had been in the previous ages of the, the Middle Ages. And when money becomes uh, flush 
and, and available, people tend to live a lot uh, better. Um, now, there were setbacks, of course. The economies weren't very stable, and um, there were also plagues, uh, waves of the plague still raging through, uh, through Western Europe. But it was, um, uh, but people, you know, gravitated towards worldly, worldly, you know, uh, things: wearing better clothes, living in better houses, hiring more servants. So it was in this world, in Florence, a very uh, wealthy city, that Saint Philip Mary, Neri was born. Um, his uh, his uh, uh, mother died when he was uh, young. And a stepmother came in, and she was wonderful with him. The stepmother made sure that she, um, uh, or that he, went to a good school. So he went to study with Dominicans, of course. And you've been to the place where some of you have been to San San Marco in Florence, where the famous paintings by Fra Angelico, and that's where he studied um, uh, with the Dominicans. Um, but like many students of the Dominicans, when his vocation came up, he did not want to become a Dominican. But anyway, um, that's a special vocation, you know. But anyway, so the, um, uh, he, started, he worked as an apprentice uh, for a banker, and that was a very well sought out after um, uh, career and apprenticeship. But, and he had a great conversion. Uh, the conversion happened... Uh, when he was, I think, in his 20s or 30s. And at this, uh, in this conversion, he left Florence and his position, and he went to Rome, and he lived impoverished, barely making any money, living virtually as a hermit in the attic, uh, in, up in the top floor, the attic floor of uh, a family in Rome, and he lived that way for two years, in um, uh, in uh, almost like a hermit. He earned money um, only by, or he earned his keep by teaching catechism to the two sons of the family that was allowing him to live in their house in Rome, and um, and then he decided to study the. Um, to study philosophy and to study theology and was ordained a priest. Um, He was assigned to uh, a parish uh, and he uh, developed a, uh, well he had, he seemed to have had, maybe because he was Italian, I don't know, but he had a wonderful personality and his personality was able to attract uh, many young men to his his uh, way of living, you know, very humbly, very poor, um, and um, he he went to people, to young men who were working in banks, uh, because he had worked in a bank, and uh, to young men living in Rome who were from Florence, because he was living in Rome and he was Florentine, and so he had. Um, this affinity with these young men, and uh, and a group of them became his disciples, and there was a uh, an obedience, the vow of obedience. But they never took vows; they never took religious vows of obedience, uh, and they did not um, give up their property either. They um, they lived as his disciples, but they still. But these young men. Uh, who were people, young men of means. They were like yuppies, you know, getting uh, good positions. But now they were listening to um, St. Philip Neri, and, um, and they uh, started, and their lives began to change. You know, because Philip Neri didn't impose on them poverty or chastity. Um, well, I guess the gospel uh, impose, you know, uh, demands uh, full sacrifice of chastity. But anyway, uh, they, they, um, these young men um, became his followers, and they, and they were the core. It was during this time that St. Philip Neri, uh, you, when he would say Mass, he would be so uh, 
wrapped in ecstasy that whoever the server was, uh, they would see him just sort of stop and the server would just, well, I'm going to leave. And he would leave and come back a few hours later when um, St. Philip would be able to continue the Mass. Can you imagine coming to Mass with him? Well, um, I think these were private Masses. Anyway, um, uh, and then there is the famous, the f famous mystical experience he had of praying and this huge, it's like a planet of, of light and fire entered into his mouth and burned, um, uh, you know, and burned in, in, in ardor of love of God in his heart. After he died, they, you know, he used to talk about that and that vision, and when they did an autopsy on him after he died um, in the late 1500s, uh, they discovered that there really was, you know, some injury that happened in his heart, um, something mysterious that they didn't understand at the time, and nobody knows what it is now. Uh, St. Philip Neri was given uh, another church by the, the, uh, the Pope. Uh, the Pope um, said, you should have uh, this church, and of course it was, it's uh, the church where he's buried today, but it was very dilapidated, and Philip Neri had the whole thing torn down, and they built it up by, from scratch, from the bottom up, and that was done with the donations of rich people and of poor people. Everybody contributed to this really happy saint that just seemed to be just a magnet um, for people. Um, um, Philip Neary heard about St. Francis Xavier, and he said, oh, maybe I should be a missionary. I would love to be like St. Francis Xavier. But his spiritual director was a Cistercian, and the Cistercian said, let Rome be your India. You know, you stay in Rome. Rome, you know, is, their values are changing, and they need you. And so uh, he's known as the Apostle of Rome. Um, uh, when he died, he was buried in that church where he still is. His body is still is today, and the church honors him. And uh, uh, so I want to uh, mention that Father Donald really loved St. Philip Neri and was, uh, felt very impacted by him uh, when he was a young student in high school. So um, we, we honor this saint, a saint of Rome today. Let us stand and let us pray. that the Lord Jesus may preserve his church from all divisiveness of factions and the influence of power, we pray to the Lord. For all who hold authority in the church, that they may exercise it in a spirit of service, we pray to the Lord. For the United States of America, that political parties may place the common good above party issues and interests, we pray to the Lord. For governments everywhere, that the Lord may inspire them to abandon ambition and domination over nations, we pray to the Lord. And let us remember with compassion all who have been degraded or victimized by the selfish ambitions of their fellow, uh, of their neighbor, and that their rights may be vindicated, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for um, uh, Carmelita Tan, Tan uh, and thanks for giving to God. And, um, uh, and also I want to throw in there a little prayer for Father Donald on this feast day of his. We pray to the Lord. And we pray finally for peace in our world, for end of the pandemic. We pray for uh, the homeless and for solutions to these uh, great social problems and all the needs in our hearts, which we mention now in silence. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, you alone are good. Guide the course of world events. Hear our petitions, which we make in faith 
and hope through Christ our Lord. As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as on this festival in honor of St. Philip Neri, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by the, his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints and all the hosts of heaven, we sing your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Peter, James, and John, and all the saints who have, and St. Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And to all of you present and to all those participating on live stream, let us share with one another the sign of Christ's peace. The peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The act of spiritual communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present. 
in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love, says the Lord.
Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of Saint Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.